This is our bouncing ball program, and we're looking at it with a debugging tool for Elm. So this is currently in development. So on the left, we see a signal graph, and this is representing the internal state of the program. So we can see the state of the program as it's running. We can see the ball moving. We can see there are time deltas. So let's take a deeper look in this program and see how it works. So we've frozen our program. We have a snapshot of our signal graph and a snapshot of the actual program. And we're going to start digging into how this program works by looking at the code that generates it. So here we have the relevant code that's responsible for making the signal graph. And we're going to go through piece by piece and see how it connects to the signal graph. And we're going to see how does this help us do hot swapping. So the first part we need to look at is this FPS30 function. So what's going on here is we're creating our first input node. So this node is responsible for putting through a steady frame rate through our program. And so uh, if you take 30 parts of a second, it's each part should be about 33 or 34 milliseconds. So we're seeing here the current value when we took the snapshot was 34 milliseconds. And then we're going to start passing this through the rest of our program. So the next thing we do is we send this to in seconds. So here what we're saying is take this input value. It's not just the value 34. It's a time varying value and apply in seconds to it. So what this little squiggly arrow is doing, is it's actually creating a new node that's associated with the in seconds function. So as a new 34 comes through here, we're going to apply in seconds to it. And because this is just converting milliseconds to seconds, we're essentially dividing by a thousand. So at this point, this parenthesized expression here has created this mini subgraph. Now, next we have our, uh, our step function. So this part is actually creating a new, another new node. So fold p is also, also creates a node. And it's going to associate the step function with it. It's going to say, here's my initial state. So that was the state that was here at the beginning of the program. And so whenever a new value comes from this uh, subgraph, so when we get a new uh, time delta, we're going to say, OK, take the step function, take our time delta, take the current state in here, and compute a new state. So this is going to update the state of this node. Now, what's interesting here is the step function is a pure function. So you don't have any dependencies on the state or on the signal graph, anything that's going on here. So if you want to change how step works, all you have to do is switch out this function. Um, it's very uh, cleanly separated from the other parts of the program. So once we have uh, the state of our program, we need to draw that. Oops. So we need to draw the state of our program on screen. And so we do that here. Again, we're dealing with a signal graph. So we need to use our lift operator. So it's saying send the signal through to the draw function. Um, so we're creating a draw function that's getting applied to all of these states. And that's what's making the scene. That's how it's getting rendered on screen. So that's the whole of our signal graph. So we went from this basic code and we generated the signal graph. And the key things are that we have our input node and then we have these intermediate nodes and each one's associated with a pure function and some of them have some state associated with them. So when we want to hot swap, we want to preserve the state, but we want to change what all the functions mean. And because Elm is a pure language, it's very, very easy just to change these functions in in and out, and we can change how the program behaves and persist the state across. So that's the essence of uh, hot swapping in Elm. And when we start the program again, we can really see what's going on here. So you see the time delta is flowing through. You see the height and the velocity changing based on the step function, based on our time deltas, and all that's getting displayed right on screen.